Hi, my name is Nicolo Piaz. I'm an interventional cardiologist from Montreal, and I'm joined uh, here today by Bernard Prendergast from London and Azim Latib from Milan, both interventional cardiologists. Welcome. So uh, maybe, Azim, you can uh, start off by telling us what were some of the uh, highlights uh, from PCR with respect to the uh, aortic uh, valve space? So probably, Nico, the part that struck me the most was Reprise 3. Okay, so for those who don't know, this is the first industry-sponsored randomized control trial comparing two different valves. So it compared the Lotus valve versus core valve, randomized two to one. Um, and they presented for the first time the primary endpoint of the study. And so what it showed really, if I could just generalize, was similar safety endpoints, you know, so as regards to at one year composite endpoint similar for both valves. Um, I think what we'd expect, less PVL with Lotus, uh, significantly less moderate to severe PVL, but high pace, higher pacemaker rates. Okay. But overall, I think an important study to know about. And how would this impact your clinical practice? Well, I think what this will do, you know, in Europe we did have um, Lotus commercially available, and I'm sure it will come back. I'm sure the study will allow it to be approved by the FDA in the near future. And I think it helps us in our selection of valve choice for patients. You know, if I need a valve in a patient with a lot of calcification, I don't want to, and I want to get rid of P-valve, and I don't want any P-valve, this confirms Lotus could be that valve. Bernard, yourself, anything interesting in the aortic space? Well, the updated ACC guidelines early this year for uh, intermediate risk uh, patients undergoing TAVI was, was a major step forward for the uh, technology. But one of the concerns as we go into low risk cohorts has been the issue of valve durability. And as you know, that's been a, quite a hot area of controversy over the last 18 months or so. So it was very reassuring for me to see the four year results of Notion. Uh, presented at this conference by uh, Lars Sondergaard and his team. And the take-home messages from this study are that the valve performance at four years supersedes that of surgical prostheses with a, a higher effective orifice area, lower valve gradient, with equivalent clinical outcomes. So very reassuring in, in a randomized control trial setting with multiple uh, TAVI devices indicating that the durability story is sustained out to four years at least. Okay. And this is clearly is very encouraging as we move into lower and lower risk cohorts. Excellent. So we, we've talked about the aortic, Azim. Uh, let's move over to the mitral. Uh, what, what have we heard here at PCR about transcatheter mitral valve uh, repair or replacement? Right. So, you know, for both, most of us, we're all looking at the mitral space. It's a really exciting space. And I think the thing that struck me the most here was uh, the presentation for the first time of the Edwards Pascal data. So Pascal is a new device for mitral valve repair that does edge to edge. Okay. Besides bringing the leaflets together, it also acts as a spacer and has some advantages over other edge to edge devices because you can independently grasp um, the leaflets, which I think could be really useful. So we saw the data from the first 23 compassionate use patients. Uh, which showed that you know, the device was implanted successfully in all patients um, with good results, reduction in MR, no real complications. So it's just, I think it's exciting because we realize we're going to have a larger toolbox with really good effective devices to repair the mitral valve. Okay, so another alternative emerging uh, device for an edge-to-edge -edge type of mitral valve repair. Right. Absolutely. And uh, Bernard, uh, we, uh, there was something about uh, transcatheter aortic valves, but in the mitral position for mitral annular calcification. That's right. So the, the MAC cohort in a large registry presented this week, uh, demonstrating that the procedure is feasible via either transapical or transeptal access. So two different approaches to the, to the implantation of the valve. Results on echocardiographic and clinical follow-up demonstrating that the valves function very well in the mitral position. The clinical complications are not insignificant, and I think that has two important messages for the clinical community. One is that we need to be very careful with patient selection. We need to be careful to avoid uh, intervening on patients where an intervention is futile, so avoiding the excessive risk category, and also refining the techniques and ironing out some of the procedural uh, steps to ensure that we reduce the procedural complications. But certainly feasible and a very exciting area to watch. Very good. And Azim, maybe we can finish off with the tricuspid space. Yeah. Um, what do you think about the tricuspid space and what have we seen here at PCR? 
Sure, so I think it's going to be a very exciting space. Um, you know, we've seen during this week an array of devices from Innovation Day and then during every day there's been some device shown either as a clinical case um, or some data. I think what we're seeing is an array of repair devices for the tricuspid, one a valve also arriving and I think it's going to be an exciting time because in Europe right now we have probably in the next few months there'll be three ongoing trials in the tricuspid space. So one for the Edwards Cardio Band, the tri repair study, there's a, the Scout 2 study for the Tri-Line device and then also the Triluminate study for the Tricuspid clip. So very exciting times, but what do you think about Tricuspid space, Nico? Um, it, uh, it is definitely something uh, emerging and evolving and uh, we have a, a certain number of devices out there and um, you know, we're just at the beginning. Um, so uh, the results are encouraging as we usually say and um, uh, I do think there's an unmet need in the space and I think transcatheter valve uh, interventions uh, within the tricuspid valve are going to meet these needs. So uh, I, think we've, I think we've heard that we're, uh, the field is, of transcatheter valves is very dynamic. We've heard about new devices and new uh, registries and trials going on. Um, and um, I think uh, this is uh, a good uh, indicator of the, uh, how healthy the field is um, and that uh, we are uh, eventually going to uh, be treating our patients more and more with transcatheter valve interventions. Thank you. Thank you.